Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel Learn with Sahira. In this video, I am going to give you the complete and clear explanation of unit number 5 from the subject C and C++ which is for degree first year second semester computer students. By watching this video, you will be perfect with unit number 5. Definitely you will be perfect. Whatever the question they might ask you, you will be able to write the answer. And easily you can score full marks. So watch the video till end. And if you are new to our channel, learn with Sahira. Subscribe it for more videos. And don't forget to share this video with your friends too. If you want the notes of C and C++ subject, let me know on my Instagram. My Instagram ID is also learn with Sahira. Text me there, I will be giving you this notes, whatever I have prepared, which are easy, simple and clear to understand. They are exam ready notes, okay? You just need to give a reading and understand the programs you will rock in your C and C++ examination. So if you want those notes, text me there on my Instagram. But note payment is must. I repeat payment is must. Keeping this aside, let us get started with the complete explanation of unit number 5. In unit number 5, first important question what I gave you is storage classes of C++. Until now, whatever we have discussed, unit 1, unit 2, unit 3, unit 4, they are where C language, okay? Here in the unit 5, we are seeing C++, okay? So, uh, here in the C++, we have storage classes, okay, a topic. So, first we need to understand what are storage classes, then we will be going with them in detail, okay. Storage classes decide where a variable leaves, how long it stays and who can use it in the program. Already we have seen what is variable, right? Variable is something uh, for which we will be assigning some values, okay. Like variable a equals to 10. So this 10 value is assigned to the variable a. So a variable is nothing but which holds some values or which holds some data. So here the storage classes are nothing but it will say us where the variable leaves. Then what is the location of variable and how long it stays until when that variable will stay there at that particular time and who are the people who can use the variables okay so storage classes are nothing but they will decide where a variable leaves how long it stays and who can use it types we have auto registers static and external okay auto means it is default okay local variable inside a function so inside function we will be having variables right so auto is nothing but the default variable we can say register stored in cpu for fast access register the name itself saying is that it is stored in cpu for fast access we can just quickly take that variable okay because it is stored in cpu static is nothing but it keeps uh, like its value even after the function ends even after the function ends, the variable will be kept in the static. External is nothing but which is used to share variables between files. When we have different number of files, yes, we will be having number of files, right? So when we want to share that variable or when we want to give that variable from one file to the other file, it is nothing but the storage class extern. Okay, so just quick summary, auto means temporary or local. Okay, local it is default. Register means fast and small which is kept in the CPU. Static means it lasts throughout program but local. It is local only but it is throughout the program and external is nothing but global across files. Okay, it can be shared between number of files. So this is nothing but storage in C++. Okay, don't feel like storage classes in C++. Don't feel like only this much explanation is enough. It will be enough if you prolong and write it. Okay, so you need to write it in your own words. Then we have differences between C and C++. Very, very, very much important question from this unit. It also might be asked for short questions. So be perfect with C and C++ differences. What is C? What is C++? What are its function? What are their function? Like that. Okay. Type you see it is procedural uh, programming language. It is uh, object oriented programming language. This type is very important and I think you all know it and function it focuses on function and procedures. It supports both functions and objects. We have functions and objects here. So here we have procedures. Here it uses structures for grouping data. If 
द कंप्लीट डेटा और द सिमिलर डेटा अनसिमिलर डेटा डिफरेंट डेटा सेम डेटा नीड टू बी ग्रुप टूगेदर इट विल यूज स्ट्रक्चर बट हियर इट यूज क्लासेस एंड ऑब्जेक्ट इन ऑर्डर टू हैंडल द डेटा ओके हियर द मेमोरी मैनेजमेंट इज लाइक मैनुअल यूजिंग फंक्शन लाइक मलॉ ओके इट सपोर्ट मैनुअल एंड ऑल्सो ऑटोमेटिक विथ कंस्ट्रक्टर्स एंड डिस्ट्रक्टर्स इनहेरिटेंस इज नॉट सपोर्टेड बट हियर इट इज सपोर्टेड polymorphism is not supported here it is supported exception handling it is not available here it is available okay these three are important try to mention these three inheritance polymorphism exception handling use when we use it we use system programming embedded systems when we are working with the systems here it is for software development games and graphical user interfaces okay so this is what it is the difference If you want to write more points, what you know, you can mention, but this will be completely enough, okay? And summary, you can see, C is great for simple, low-level tasks, and it is for complex programs with objects and classes. Classes. C only will be used for but dynamic or the big, like uh, difficult or complex task uh, tasks. We use C plus plus, okay? then we have third important question but before starting let me say you that if you are watching this video subscribe our channel learn with sahira now itself for more videos third is explain in detail about object oriented programming language that is nothing but our c++ and also advantages of it okay so let us see what is object oriented programming it is the way of writing programs by organizing data and functions into objects okay very very important each object represents a real world thing and properties data and behavior so it is the way to write programs by organized data or you can say organizing the data like uh, or data should be organized right in order to understand read or maintain so here it is used to organize the data firstly and it functions into the objects okay as we have discussed functions and objects will be there here in object oriented programming language here it functions into the objects okay so key concepts you can see class a blueprint to create objects object is nothing but instance of a class encapsulation it is uh, like uh, it will keep the data and functions together in one unit all the data and functions will be kept together that is nothing but encapsulation inheritance child classes get features from parent classes as we get our genes from our uh, forefathers or our parents in the same way inheritance is nothing but from parent classes the features will be transferred to the child classes okay polymorphism ability to take many forms okay so it will be taking many forms and abstraction is nothing but it can hide complex details and show only the important parts okay ye wagera wagera nahi khali jo important hai wo batata okay next advantages you can see easy to understand bilkul reusable code we can reuse the code again and again because it has inheritance Uh, concept right inheritance feature is there modular it is easy to divide work into objects very easy maintainable fixing bugs is easier with separate objects flexible polymorphism allows the same interface uh, to work with different data oops helps make big problems easier to build and manage okay then we have fourth important question data members and various member functions first let us see class components in c++ means data members and member functions in class in c++ is made up of two main parts okay like class components are two one is data members and the other one is member functions data members means what these are the variables declared inside a class whatever the variables are declared inside a class are nothing but data members okay they store the attributes or properties of an object like example in a student class data members could be student name roll number marks as we have seen our previous video explanations id name marks right i have given you my example itself so that is nothing but data members member functions means these are the functions inside a class like what object can do so it shows the detail calculates the result update the marks all these are the member functions we can do the updates okay quick comparison you see data member stores uh, object data like name age and it performs actions like showing updating cancelling and all that think of a class as a real object like a car in the car data members can be color model and engine size 
like member functions can be starting it uh, stopping it and accelerating it very very easy and understandable uh, uh, what do you call example of car okay i hope you have got what i'm trying to say no need to mug up no need to remember just understand the concept okay unit 5 is really the important and the easiest one from all the five units unit 5 is important and easy one here they will not ask you any program write this program write that program they will not ask you they will be directly asking you the question you need to write okay so i hope you have got what i'm trying to say so if you are having any further doubts let me know in the comment section for notes you can text me on my instagram learn with sahira but note payment is must and keep uh, check out like go to the channel playlist our channel playlist to learn with sahira playlist playlist is with the name of semester 2 c and c++ under that playlist you will be getting all the videos related to c and c++ subject okay so all the very best bye bye